Hey, man. How y'all doing this morning? Mm, let's go get it. Let's sit up for the word of prayer. I said, everybody, please stand. The congregation, please stand. And open up with the word of prayer. Our dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come today, Lord, to bring honor and glory to your name, Lord, as we're here in this house from amongst brothers and sisters, Lord, to recognize you and to give you the praise and honor and glory again, Lord. We're here to worship for one thing, Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave it all to us, Lord, and through him we'll see you, Father. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing for recognition of the flags. First, to the United States flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood, uniting all Christians in service and in love. And you may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. You notice I said United States. <laughs> I think we kind of blow that one out of context every now and then. I asked the Mexicans, the Canadians, anybody on the North and South American continent, they're all Americans, believe it or not. America. In some sense, we should be called United Statesans, but that don't sound well, does it? <laughs> Our call to worship him this morning is found on page 15 in the Baptist hymnal, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, to my heart to sing Thy grace, streets of mercy, never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain, fix upon it, comes of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me with a stranger, wandering from the fall of God. He to rescue me from danger, brought me with his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great the debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a better, by my wandering heart to thee. Go to wander, Lord, I feel it, wrote to lead the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take it, seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Amen. Well, it is good to see all of you in our worship service this morning. If you have your bulletin, just a few announcements I'd like to share with you. Um, not a whole lot going on this week other than our Wednesday night uh, services will be uh, at 6.30. Uh, youth and students will meet down at the rec center at 6.30. Adults will meet down in the overflow edition also at 6.30. Uh, we are continuing adults our, our uh, walk through the book of uh, 1 Peter. And uh, we just started chapter 2, so if you'd like to get on on that, it is certainly not too late. We have a great time uh, in those Wednesday night Bible studies, so ask that if you would or are interested in that, please uh, uh, come and be a part of that at, again, 6.30 Wednesday night. Also on Sunday night, uh, it's much more laid back kind of a, 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 a time for us in worship. And uh, we've kind of been doing Ask the Pastor. And uh, if there are any questions that you would like to ask, uh, if, you would, <clears throat> if you would, write them down on the uh, uh, tear-out piece that is in the uh, bulletin. And uh, you can write them on there, a piece of paper, whatever. It don't matter. And uh, you can either uh, drop it. You can give it directly to me. You can drop it in the mailbox that is just outside my office door. And uh, it's not hard to miss. It says Ask 
the pastor on it. So uh, you can put it in there. Uh, we'll get the questions, study up on them a little bit, and uh, come back on Sunday night and, and give you the answer that, uh, that, that we have found through Scripture. Um, other than that, I don't think that there is a whole lot going on. So let me turn it over to Brother Tim. Uh, first, before I give the Sunday school announcement, we have a steak supper this Thursday night at Live Oak uh, Christian Church at 7 o'clock. I've already had 17 to attend, so um, I'm writing down the regulars, but um, uh, some of the ones that I reach out to, um, please text me and let me know that um, uh, you will attend because this is going to be important this week. We have our very own speaking from Clayland Baptist Church, which is Lauren's son, Sam. Yep, yeah. Sam. So he's going to be speaking. Yep. But now for Sunday school. We've uh, had a uh, class regain <laughs> the high attendance and the better class. I'm not going to call any names, but they counting the people there every Sunday. And we had 47 this morning in Sunday school with four visitors, and Devon's got the better <laughs> Here we go. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what, we work hard to get that better. Oh, goodness. It is, it is good, though. What a great Sunday school hour that, uh, that we have. If you're not involved in Sunday school, I certainly do encourage you. One of the most important hours that we can do at this, uh, at the, on this property all week. Uh, Sunday school is a great time, uh, especially for those uh, uh, small groups. Uh, there has been a pair of glasses that was found outside. So uh, if you or anyone know of anyone who is missing a pair of glasses, uh, they will be up here on the pulpit. You can collect them um, at your convenience. All right. Anything else? God is good. Amen. Amen. Brother Lauren. That'll take us to our next hymn this morning for Falling Along in the Hymnal, page 58, Like a River Glorious. Like a river glorious, it's got perfect peace over all victorious in its bright increase. Perfect in it floweth Fuller every day, perfect in it groweth, deeper all the way. Stay upon Jehovah, hearts are fully blessed. Find as he has promised, perfect peace and rest. Hiding in the hollow of his blessed head, never folk can follow. Never trait to stand, not a surge of worry, not a shade of care, not a blast of hurry, touch the spirit there. Stay upon Jehovah, hearts are fully blessed, find as he has promised, perfect peace and rest. Every joy or trial, Falling from above, traced upon our dial by the Son of Love. We may trust Him fully, all for us to do. They who trust Him wholly, find Him wholly true. Stay upon Jehovah, hearts are fully blessed. Find as He has promised. Perfect peace and rest. Amen. And now take us to our operatory hymn this morning. Hey, Jack, there's three. Page 54, again, if you're following along in the hymnal, Great is Thy Faithfulness, our operatory hymn. Great is Thy Faithfulness. Forever. 
Amen.
heard this one song on the radio. I'm so blessed. Even on my good days, I'm so blessed. Even on my bad days, I'm so blessed. And this kind, of, this our special this morning kind of rides along there, because you know Jesus is great. Jesus is great, and I love him so much because I'm so blessed. There's no such thing as luck. It's a blessing. get you to do me a favor number two on that board turn it down just a tad how is everybody this morning Amen. very good you find it number two down how about it now not as much feedback we good don't 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 go anywhere just yet. <laughs> I don't know. I'll tell you what. You know, um, God is good. Amen. Amen. And uh, a lot of times we don't realize how many people it takes for everything to run smooth until they're missing. <laughs> and uh, and this morning we uh, we don't have anybody in our in our sound booth uh, video and all that, but but uh, we're gonna make it through. We we got it going. Amen. Amen. And it's interesting because uh, this morning we're talking about having a, or living a successful life, and and I've, I've thought a lot about this uh, this message this week, and and I thought about maybe just a little bit more. Hey, look and see. Is is number one? Is is it mute? Is that light on? Push number one. Okay, mute number one. Let's try it again. Hey, that'll work. 
still a little bit, not too bad. All right, we're going to figure this thing out this morning. Anyway, I thought a lot about this morning and uh, uh, this message and talking about living a successful life. And, and, I, and I think for sure that we all want a, uh, to have a successful life. And um, we, we certainly measure success in a lot of different ways. In fact, a lot of times uh, the way that we as Christians measure success is certainly a lot different than the way that the world measures success. And this morning I want to talk about what it is uh, not only to have success in our world, but also to have success as a Christian. So let me start off by doing this. Let me ask you this question. Does God still guide his people today? Does God still lead his people um, how, how would you answer that? How does he do that? Um, of course, certainly if we look through the Bible, we look through Scripture, uh, we can see God's hand throughout all of Scripture. Can we say amen to that? Uh, just to name a few, and like I say, this is by no means an exhaustive list. Trust me on that. Uh, somehow this thing just quit. There it is. Uh, we can see God's hand on Abraham. Um, you know, God called him and uh, uh, moved him from where he was to the land that he would give him. Uh, so we saw God uh, uh, moving Abraham. He becomes the father of Israel. Uh, we see God's hand on Moses as he leads the children of Israel uh, out of Egypt, out of bondage. Interestingly, although God's name is not mentioned in the entirety of the book of Esther, we can see that God put Esther in the right place at the right time. Can we say amen, amen. to that? And, I, and, and, and I've studied the book of Ex Esther extensively. And, and uh, my favorite part in the entirety of that book is when Mordecai comes to her and says, How do you know? How do you know that God hasn't put you where you are for such a time as this? Let that sink in for just a minute. And we could say that in, in numerous parts of our life. How do you know that God hasn't put you where you are for such a time as this? Man, you want to talk about living a successful life. Let, let, let Just pay attention to that for a minute. So we, we see him putting Esther in the right place at the right time. Nehemiah, he gave Nehemiah <coughs> instructions to go back and, and to build the wall and um, get over into the New Testament and of course, Paul, the greatest missionary of, of the New Testament, besides Jesus, of course. We see God's hand on Paul in so many different ways. Again, this is just to name a few. We could spend the rest of our time talking about different ones that, that God has led and that God has, has guided. And so we look back through Scripture and, and we see this happening. But what about for us today? What about in our daily life? Does does God still lead us? Does God still guide us? Can, can we go to the Lord and expect Him to, to give us directions and help us make those decisions in life? That's the questions that we're asking this morning. I'll go ahead and tell you up front that I believe the answer to that is a resounding yes. Can we say amen? amen. Yes. Yes, He leads us. Yes, He guides us. And um, we're going to look at a, at a passage from Proverbs this morning, just a couple of verses. But uh, there's four parts to this passage. And uh, I believe that this passage gives us instructions to have the success that we're talking about. And uh, yes, the Lord will lead us. Yes, He will guide us. And um, He will give us a balance of life. He will help us make the right decisions. But here's the question. And this is where it falls on us. This is our part of it. This is our condition that we have to hold up to it. The question is, is when he does lead us and when he does guide us, will you obey his direction? <laughs> so you knew there was going to be a catch to it, didn't you? So let's dive into it. Let's see what, uh, what Proverbs has to say in Proverbs chapter 3 and verses 5 and 6. The Bible says, from the New Living Translation, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you which path to take. Can we say amen, amen. to that? Four parts of this passage this morning that I want to show you. And the first one is very simple. It just simply says to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord, but it doesn't stop there. It says trust in the Lord with all of your heart. First step in getting the guidance to God 
and, and his guidance for our lives is admitting that we need his help. Can we say amen to that? Whoo! <clears throat> How many times do we try to fight it on ourselves? How many times do we try to figure it out for ourselves? Knowing the whole time that the Bible says that without God we can do nothing. We can do nothing. And, 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 we, and, we, and we like to, to skip over that part because we like to think that we can do it on our own. We like to think that, 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 uh, that, that we have the ability to do it. No, no, no. It's God that gave us the ability to do it to begin with. Amen. But trust in the Lord. And we have to admit that we need His help. And that's why that's the way uh, uh, Solomon begins uh, this first verse. And the only way I'm telling you, the only way that he can help us is that he knows the right way to the right ends. We're commanded to trust God with nothing less than with all of our hearts. I want you to pay attention to that for a minute. You understand and realize that we are created beings. And we have been created to put our trust into something. How many of you are, are what we would call very trusting people? <laughs> I, I would probably say that I am. I, I like to find the best in people. I, I would like to think that, that whoever it is that I'm talking to is being honest with me and uh, being truthful with me. I would like to, to be able to trust people. And I, for the most part, I, I do trust people. But the truth is we put our trust in, 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 in people all the time, other people, strangers even. Um, as, as Tim cursed me with a the, with the 50-year-old birthday, he goes, just wait, now it gets interesting. And he's right, doctors and all. How many of you put your faith and trust in the doctors? Well, of course you do. You wouldn't go see them, right? You wouldn't take their advice. How many of you put your faith and, and trust in the pharmacy that they gave you the right medication that the doctor called in? Of course you do. How many put your faith and trust in the drug manufacturer that they... And either the list goes on. How many of you put your trust and faith in those that are driving on the road to stay on their side of the road? How many of you rode with somebody? You put your faith and trust in that person that you rode. The list goes on. You understand what I'm saying? How many of you have ever been to a place that you've never been before, before the days of GPS and got lost? How many of you are not willing to admit that you've ever been lost? Okay, there I say. <laughs> When we live in the days of GPS now, and boy, it took, it took the guesswork out. It, do you understand for, from a guy's perspective how great GPS is? Whew, man, we don't have to. You're lost, aren't you? Nope. GPS knows where I'm at. And we can type in that name, and we can type in that address, and, and we're putting our faith and our trust in the programmers and the satellites and all the electronics and, and in order to get us to the place that that we're wanting to go and, and we put and why is it so hard for us to put our faith and trust in our Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah, we put our faith and trust him to save our soul from from the pits of hell, but to give us eternal life. But then a lot of times we just kind of leave it there. We don't put our faith and trust in him in our everyday life. Why don't we go to him with our with our everyday problems, with our everyday questions? Do you understand? That when the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, it is literally saying that you can bet your life on the Lord. Amen. That's exactly what it's saying. Trust in God, it literally means to bet your life on God's truth and God's wisdom. Trust, it's natural to us. We, we want to trust people. We want to believe what they have to say. But why is it that we have find it so hard? To put our trust in a God who the Bible says cannot lie. Amen? Amen. We've all been lied to, yeah? And boy, it hurts, don't it? And the Bible says that God cannot lie. We worship and serve a God that is always true, that is always faithful, that will always do what he said, do you understand that God has a plan for us and he wants us to follow that plan? And the Bible says that we ought to trust him with that plan with all of our hearts. It's interesting. As more we mature as a Christian, 
the easier it is that we ought to be able to let go of the things of the world and, and to trust God more and more and more. All of your heart. I go back and, and find this in the New Testament. I find this in James chapter 1 and verse number 8. As we went through our study in James, and by the way, tonight um, I want you to come back because we're talking about mercy triumphs over judgment. In James chapter 2 and verse number 13, y'all come back tonight for that lesson. And I got, I got something to show you for that. 5.30 tonight, by the way. Get over to James chapter 1 and verse number 8. And James, he's talking about a double-minded man. And James says that a double-minded man, he is, he is unstable in all of his ways. And, and, and I wanted to camp out on that double-mindedness for just a second. And, and most likely, <clears throat> there is a, there's a good chance that we have all met somebody or known somebody that, that we would call double-minded. And what it literally means is that it's talking about a person with two minds or, 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 or two lines of thought. And, and they try to go down both of them at the same time. And they, they don't work out too good, amen? The Bible says you've got to pick one or the other. One minute you're saying and doing one thing, the next is something different. Not sure of anything, they don't trust anything. David says, as a Christian, as a believer in an almighty God, we can put our trust, we can put our faith, and we can trust Him with all of our heart. Not a piece of it, not a section of it, but all of it. All of it. And here's something else, because when we learn to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, we will automatically take care of the second part of that verse which says don't rely on yourself don't depend on your own understanding <clears throat> again not only are we to trust the Lord with all of our heart for, for God's guidance but we should not solely depend on our own understanding when you start to look at this <laughs> alright let me ask it to you like this how many of you watch the news even 15-20 minutes within the last month Anybody watch? Just, just a little bit of it. Y'all understand that when people are left to their own understanding, they go nuts. I mean, our world has lost its mind. Amen. Amen. What happens when we're left to our own understanding? Man, we need this, we need this warning because, man, I got to tell you, if we... If we rely on our own thought press, our own thought process, um, I, well, I would go ahead and tell you, you're going to miss God's will straight up. You're going to miss it. Uh, let's say in Old Testament for just a second. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 9. Notice what, uh, what the Bible tells us here in Isaiah. <coughs> for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. What, what does that mean? It means that we don't think the same way that God thinks. Amen? Amen. It means that, that, that and, and here's the thing that so many times we forget about God. God only sees where we are. God sees where we've been, and he sees where we're going. Amen? And... and <coughs> He has the ability to, to see our life in its entirety and its scope of time. And we only get a little snapshot view of it. We have no idea what's coming up tomorrow, do we? We, we might plan on what we want to do tomorrow. We might have an idea of how tomorrow is going to play out. But we don't know how tomorrow is going to play out. God does. Yeah, God does. And so when we talk about leaning on our own understanding or leaning on God's understanding, doesn't it make much more sense for us to lean on God's understanding? Isaiah, heavens are higher than the earth. <coughs> God's ways are higher than our ways. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. When you lean on something, what are you doing? You're putting your weight on it. 
And that's exactly what God wants us to do with him. He wants us to put our whole weight on him. When we do this, it gives us the ability to have his wisdom and his guidance through us, through the Holy Spirit. And God wants us to use his wisdom. You know, I thought about something. We, at the beginning of the message, we were talking about God's hand on different ones. And, and we saw God guiding different ones throughout the Scripture. Have you ever thought what it might would have looked like if those men and women had done it on their own thoughts and their own wisdom and their own strength and own power? Have you ever thought of what it might look like? If they had done it on their own understanding instead of relying on God's understanding. I mean, if you think about it, if David had relied on his own understanding, he would have never walked out on that battlefield and fought Goliath. Amen? If Noah would have relied on his own understanding, he would have, <coughs> he would have never built that ark. If Abraham would have relied on his own understanding... He would have never gone to the promised land. And I can promise you as a dad who has a son, he would have never climbed that mountain and offered his son as a sacrifice. Amen? When you stop and think about it, none of these things that are listed on the board, and, and again, just to name a few, none of these things make, their, make any sense to the natural mind. None of them. Go back to David and Goliath. <coughs> Go back to David and Goliath. How many were trying to talk David from going out onto that battlefield? They said, David, you out go out there, they're going to kill you. I mean, he's a trained fighting soldier. He's a giant. You go out there, David, he's going to kill you. How much sense did it make for, for Noah to build a, a boat out in the middle of the desert? I mean, can you imagine the, the, the people that were talking about Noah in Noah's day? How about Abraham? Abraham, are you really going to pack up your family, everything you own, and, and just follow this voice that's leading you? Yep. Abraham, are you really going to take your son up that mountain and lay him on an altar? If that's what God wants, then yeah. Man, it don't make sense in our, in our human mind. It's, it's, it's really, really tough to sort out. It's really tough to figure out. But when we quit relying on our own understanding and start relying on an awesome God, it does make sense. Amen? Amen. And here's the thing, you know. A lot of times we talk about important decisions in life. And... And we take those important decisions. Maybe you take them to God. Maybe, maybe you and your wife or whomever, you all sit down and you pray about it before you make these important decisions. I certainly hope so. But that's with the big decisions. What about the little ones? What about the little decisions in life? Do we, do we go to God for those as well? Or do we have that thought in the back of our mind? Oh, this is so little, it's, 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 this is so petty. I don't want to bother God with this. Have we ever thought that? Probably. But that's not what God wants us to think. God wants us to take all of our decisions to Him. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't rely on yourself. Take them to God. Cannot be wise in our own eyes. Always listen to him. I want to talk to you about something that's kind of interesting that, that I've come across. <clears throat> Have you ever noticed that once you see something for the first time, then you start seeing it everywhere? How many of you remember back in um, 1999? I know that was 100 years ago. 1999, John F. Kennedy Jr., he uh, died in a plane crash. How many of y'all remember that event? Several, okay, several of you do. Um, records show that his plane had drifted off course, and um, many of the science that experts, whatever category you want to put them in, 
had said that, that, that uh, Kennedy had probably experienced vertigo. How many of you know what that is? It means vertigo, and probably, you know, sometimes if you stand up too fast or, or whatever, you, your world just kind of gets real shaky. <coughs> when pilots experience vertigo, they lose all sense of direction. Um, they, they think up is down, north is south, east is west. They, they have absolutely no idea what's really going on. And um, they begin to panic. And in their panic, they believe or think one thing, but their instruments are telling them something different. Now, of course, pilots are trained to know the signs of vertigo. They're taught how to avoid conditions that cause it. But it still happens nonetheless. Oftentimes, when this happens, pilots are taught to trust the instruments, not fly by the seat of your pants. Because when you do, oftentimes, you crash. I want to talk to you about spiritual vertigo for just a minute. When I think about spiritual vertigo, I think that a lot of times we as Christians get the idea and we, get, we, we buy into this lie of Satan and things get turned and twisted in our minds and we don't know which way to go. And that is why Proverbs tells us, don't lean into your own understanding but to trust and rely on God. Let's go back to Isaiah for a second. <coughs> Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 31 Cure for spiritual vertigo. Here it is. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Okay, can you hear me? All right, good deal. Uh, turn number one up just a little bit. And here's the thing that I'm telling you this morning. What we need to do is recognize the signs of these spiritual vertigo. Number three, total obedience. Seek His will in all you do. Now, as a Christian, we're looking for that spiritual success, and we need to recognize and realize that, that we have to honor God in all that we do. Proverbs chapter 3 Verses 5 and 6, you'll see the word all appear twice, once in, four, or once in verse 5, once in verse 6. We are to love, trust the Lord with all of our heart, <clears throat> and second, in all of our ways. In this Solomon, he's telling us that we have to have the idea uh, of, of what's actually happening here. It doesn't mean that we ha uh, have to recognize that he is there, but what it means is that we have to honor and obey in the power and decisions that he's given us to direct our lives. Now, I want to go back and, and go to the New Testament for just a second. Matthew chapter uh, 6 and verse number 33. Now, there, the Bible, Jesus, he's telling us, he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and these things will be added unto you. What is it that we're supposed to be seeking? Seek first. In all of our decisions that we make, we need to be seeking Him first. What things? All these things that be added to you. If you go and look at uh, atheism, at its foundation, it boils to the fact that they not, do not believe and they do not acknowledge who God is. And there's basically two types of atheism. One of them is that they say that God does not exist at all. And the second is that they say God may or may not exist, but either way we're not going to do what he says. Both types refuse to acknowledge God's power, refuse to acknowledge God's uh, ability to lead into God. And there are a lot of people, there's a lot of Christians who call themselves Christians, a lot of people who call themselves Christians, that believe in God. But according to their life, They've never acknowledged him. Call it false sense of salvation. 
acknowledge God, it produces obedience. The fourth and final thing that I want us to look at in this passage this morning is a promised direction. He will show you which path to take. Last part of verse 6, have the promise for those who are willing to give all of their heart to God's ways, God directing their path. Go back and think about the GPS for a minute. How many of you use GPS, just, just out of curiosity? Okay, I'm not alone. Thank you, thank you. How many of you follow it turn by turn? A few of you. How many of you know a better way than the GPS? Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? We'll plug in that address and and we trusted to get it where we're going, but we're going, nah, I ain't to wait. And we veer off a course from it anyway. I don't know why, but I mean, sometimes it happens and, and it truly does. Um, it's not that it won't get you to where you're going. You will eventually get there. But typically when we're coming back from uh, South Carolina, I always, tell my GPS to take us home. Not that I don't know how to get there, but I want to know if I'm making good time. See, we as guys, we try to beat our, our last time and try to get there quicker. So I put it in there, and as it's taking us home, when we're coming down I-10, it actually tells us to get off of I-10 and get on I-75 and go north towards Valdosta to get to Live Oak. I've yet to figure it out, but that's what it does. Well, we just stay on I-10, and it eventually figures out where we're going. But here's the thing. Will the, will the GPS eventually? Yes. But when we talk about our relationship with God, it gives us this promised direction, promised destination. Solomon, he says that he will show you, God will show us what path to take. When we talk about being a successful Christian and we consider all of these verses these verses that we've read this morning we have to understand that the first step in all of this is our surrender to the Lord because until we surrender fully to him we will never be able to trust him with all of our hearts until we fully surrender him we will never uh, uh, be in a position to where he can lead us we'll never be in a position where he can guide us we will never be in a position where he can give us those promised directions where he can lead us down the right path until we fully surrender to him we are still going to try to do it our way we're still going to try to do it our own and most likely we're still going to make a pig's ear out of it surrender with all of your heart, in all of your way, in obedience, making the conscious decision to follow Christ at all cost. I don't know how many times I've heard people say, well, Brother B, I, I would, but I don't know what God's going to call me to do. He might call me to be a missionary in, in Africa or something. Okay, what's the problem with that? Well, I don't want to go to Africa. I understand that. So what you're telling me then is that you want to be a Christian, but you don't want to be a Christian at all costs. I'm asking you this morning, will you follow him at all cost? And here's the truth. Once you're leaning on God's direction, you can overcome two of the problems. The first problem is we don't always have enough wisdom to know what the right thing is. 
Have you ever made a decision out of ignorance? You didn't have all the information, and later on you learned a little more information about something, and you go, boy, if I'd have known that, I'd have probably made a different decision. Huh? Leaning on God's direction solves that. And second, we don't have the power or the ability to be in control. God does. When are we going to learn that only through God that we can do things? Here's the truth. God keeps his promise when we obey his commands. Our obedience prepares us to receive and enjoy the life he has for us. So the question is simple. Will you surrender to him today? Father, we thank you for this day and this hour that you've given to us. Lord, as we bring this to a close, God, I pray that what has been said and done would bring glory and honor to you. That, Father, with, uh, with all things that we will learn to lean on you with all of our heart. And, Father, that you will continue to lead in God and direct. And, Father, that we will be responsive to that. God, that we will follow you in obedience. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As we stand and sing our hymn of invitation, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fire. Wednesday adults meet down in overflow. Uh, First Peter continued. Uh, youth and children uh, meet down in the rec center also at 630. Uh, any other any other announcements we need to make? If you're going to the men's dinner, let Tim know. And uh, otherwise, uh, everybody should be good. Everybody good? Gene, you dismiss us, please. Sir.